This is Ben Lowe's Jaster Murillo helmet. It's mostly complete except for the rangefinder and other ear cap top. I'm just waiting on the parts from a boba maker. So it's still a little rough. I haven't done any JB weld to fill any seams like on the cheeks or little welding indents here and there. But that'll be after some photos. And Friday. I'll just mix up a huge batch of JB Weld and apply it as needed. You're probably wondering about the lack of vent. Uh, Canon Jaster Murals helmet does not have a rear key slot vent. So, this helmet was made with a lot of references dug up from the comic, uh, from some other people's builds. Speaking of seams, that's one of the reasons why I'll probably fill that in. As far as I know, that won't make any difference as far as airflow, so. JB Weld it is. Now some other people's um, Jaster Scratch builds they just use a Django helmet. The Django helmet isn't that bad of a base. I mean they're really similar. They're pretty much supposed to be vaguely identical. But again in the comic there's a lot of variation between panels. So it's all steel uh, so the rear panel is 18 or er, 20 gauge. I'm changing those back to up to 18. Um, it saves maybe half a pound, but it's a lot more difficulty than it's worth just to, without blowing through it with the MIG. So some areas went through, but filler weld, you know, it's fine. Just a bit of JB weld. So you also notice it's reinforced. That's something I do that no one else does, and for good reason. I have a destroyer made of the infamous hybrid resin. It's supposed to be some of the strongest stuff out there, but the problem I have with it is the rest of my armor is uh, admittedly, um, well, let me put it this way. When I make something, I don't count the ounces. I kind of count the pounds, but that doesn't really make a difference for me because as long as it's as durable as possible, I'm happy. And I mean, just to work out. So this helmet, it is, I guess by some people's standards, heavy, but it's just kind of medium to what I make. It's a little over five pounds or two point something kilograms. And a lot of the weight comes from the ears. I know it might not look a lot because they're low profile and everything, but each ear is 10 pieces. So these slats are um, thicker steel, but they are folded sheet metal. And so you got one layer, two layers, and then the slats. Slats for days. So, hold it on a bracket and on the side. The face is the outer layer, the, um, the concave layer here, and then the flat part. So, when making the reinforcements, I always try and do it so that the bare minimum amount of space is taken up because there's not that much room in these helmets anyways with the uh, concave cheeks so this being just finished fabrication minus tops of the ears you can still have some adjustment bends made or in this case a stress test so we'll do just that balance on and now I am balancing on the helmet without support that's uh, about 270 pounds I never said I was lightweight but 270 pounds, it may have bent about half an inch to one inch, but 270 pounds. 
I think I'm the only source for such helmets. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass to bounce on, but quick bend in the opposite direction. And we're good to go. Actually, let's see another torture test. Oh yeah, bit of weathering, hair in my mouth, and uh, yeah, didn't quite bend it back all the way, I'm doing this one-handed, that's what she said. Anyways, I'll get the uh, machine square, take some figures, bend it back properly. You're probably thinking, you stood on it, how are you going to bend it back? I'm going to stick it in the vise. So, uh, yeah.